the night of April 25th when the 11 and Nottingham England was taking its course. Just like any other night, it was dark and quiet with only the occasional sound of a car driving by on the distant road. However, the peace was short-lived as loud sirens of police cars engulfed the neighborhood. There was a commotion on the street. A house was on fire woken up from there. Deep slumbers residents went out of their houses and gathered on the dimly lit street. Sure enough, there was a house on fire on the street. It was the house of the Bartland family, 42-year-old Jack Willine Bartlam, also known as Jack, her 14-year-old son Daniel Bartland, our toddler along with a family dog. The house was immersed in flames as smoke billowed from the windows and roof and the sound of the fire was like a rabbit, bestroaring and snarling as it consumed everything in its path. House was circled by a swarm of worry. Individuals by the time the news reporters showed up there looking for scoop before the firefighters got to it. Seeing a small figure stumbled out of it, burning property coughing and gasping. For air Daniel Bart Lamb had successfully escaped the deadly fire and he was not. Alone, the little boy had his arms wrapped around the two other helpless members of the house, his very young brother and the family dog. To the news, he was a hero, a survivor. We saved two lives. A legend of the sound of sirens filled the air as the fire trucks pulled up to the burning house. They quickly went to work, unrolling the hoses and connecting them to hydrants as the fire service surveyed. The scene, it could be seen that the fire had started in the upper right corner of the house in the room of the mother. Jack will lie in the room was in ruins with blackened walls and charred floor smoke still rose from the remains of the fire and the smell of burnt wood and plastic filled the air. A team of investigators moved through the wreckage, their faces grim as they searched for clues. The inspectors could see that the fire had been started on the bed near the body of a person who was lying there. The bed was almost completely destroyed with only a few twisted and melted pieces. Remaining the body was charred beyond recognition, and it was clear that they had not survived the fire. Closer inspection revealed a strange observation about the body. It was almost as if it was the source of the fire. Rather than the victim of it, there was more to the story than it seemed. The body was covered in a white sheet, and it was carefully lifted and taken for an autopsy. The post-mortem revealed that the mother had not actually died as a result of the fire. The body had lost its life before the fire started. They knew that the mother, Jackie, had lost her life as a result of blunt force. Trauma, what secret? was the body hiding. The strange revelation gave rise to an investigation and that meant, of course, questioning the family, friends, and everyone around the incident. Jackie's son Daniel was brought in for questioning by the police. Daniel explained the horrifying events of the night, saying that he had gotten up in the middle of the night with an urge to visit the bathroom. However, on his way to the bathroom, he was met with an eerie sight. Standing there in the corner was a strange man with a mask covering his face. Explaining further, Daniel added that upon seeing him, the man swung the hammer he had in his hand at Daniel who fled. Following the strange incident, Daniel wanted to check on his family and made his way to his mother's room to see if she was okay. To his dismay, he found that his mother had been in a gruesome attack and was lying on the bed all bloody. He also saw sparks rising up from the bed. Jackie was laying on the strange man had, but the body on fire before fleeing the scene. Continuing his narrative, Daniel said that this spine-chilling scene caused panic in his body and at that moment he thought of his brother and ran to find him and safely escort him out of the house he called for the help of his neighbors to raise the alarm to call police he then ran back inside to rescue the family dog and unfortunately he 
could not get to his mother, she was left. Stuck in a ring of flames as the house burned away, Daniel expressed intent. Regret that he could not save his mother. Daniel had a very strong version of it. Events that sounded solid, he proudly stood behind his story for weeks. Police, however, did not seem to buy into the 14-year-old's version of the event. They were a little suspicious about the case, and they did not believe Daniel's story one bit they did not see him as an emerging hero. It was clear to them that this fire had been used to cover the tracks of a very bad thing that occurred that night forensics found two weapons. At the crime scene, two hammers were discovered to burn, clawfoot hammer and a club hammer. Police investigators had it formed their own theory that the 14-year-old had intentionally left the club hammer at the scene so it'd be assumed to be murder weapon, but as it turns out, forensics actually discovered that the murder weapon was the clawfoot hammer. The mother had a boyfriend at the time, Named Simon, it was Easter weekend, and Simon had a few busy days working away from home when the unspeakable incident took place. He wasn't around the house the following morning. Simon heard the devastating news that a fire had occurred in Nottingham. Later, it was confirmed that it was on the same street where his partner lived. He said, that's all I got, that's all I knew, and then it confirmed it had been a fire on this particular road where she lived and I didn't know at that point, but I knew straight away it was her house I don't know why, but I knew it was her house straight away I thought. Daniel, Jackie Bartlett, was a ray of light, loving person who would never harm her. Sold it was a wonder for everyone who would want to kill such a good nature, warm-hearted woman and why. Welcome back to another episode of Twisted Minds where we tap it into the gruesome and strange minds of the world's most evil beings today. We are going to dive into the mystery of the murder of Jackie Bart Lamb was the hero it. 14 year old hiding a huge secret was he really telling the police the truth. Let's find out what actually happened on the night of fire. Jackie gave birth to her first born. Daniel in 1996 with her then partner. Adrian the pair tied the knot three. Years after Daniel came into the world, Jackie was regarded as a wonderful mother with a nice gentle and common spirit. Jackie and Adrian had only one child Daniel because she wanted the best. For her child, Jackie thought her son would benefit from attending private school. Jackie and Adrian lived a nice comfortable life and it seemed like the perfect setting for Daniel. S younger brother was born shortly. Or while Daniel was enrolled in private school, soon after a dark cloud settled over the Bartlin family as Adrian and Jack decided to split up this divorce. Resulted in a great deal of financial hardship for the mother. This meant that she could no longer afford private schooling for Daniel even though she tried for months to catch up with his school fees so he was put into a state school instead Jackie along with her two boys then moved to another part of Nottingham music in 2008 while Jackie was enjoying night out alone she came across a man named Simon he noticed her kind and caring demeanor and got smitten by her outlook on life the pair became infatuated with one another and quickly started dating this man appeared to be good for Jackie and he decided to help her as she was a single mother who was struggling financially the couple decided to pull their money and buy a big house so that they could live happily together as a family and leave their financial troubles in the past so the two along with Daniel his little brother searched for the perfect home Jackie and Simon found many houses they liked. However, Daniel did not seem to be on the same page. In fact, Daniel said that he hated each and every house that they visited and pointed out problems with every single one of them. Jackie, being a mother, always put her kids happiness before her own and didn't want to move into a house that Daniel was not 
happy with and so their dream of moving in together was delay music eventually they decided on a house and moved in together but again daniel didn't cooperate with the decision he became very isolated and spent most of his time alone his family would have a nice dinner or movie night but daniel refused to join instead he would shut himself away in his room and feed into his dark fantasies the decision to transfer him to a state school did not sit well with daniel he felt that state education was beneath him and that he had lost his status at this time around daniel was eight years old and showed an obsession with gory fictional stories and horror films and not just any scary movies, but the ones that genuinely kept you up at night. Mare on Elm Street and Saw are just two examples of his taste in movies. It was also noted that the young boy carried a lot of pinned up anger in him. He appeared to be angry with everyone. And as the years passed, his anger only seemed to grow. He harbored intense hatred toward his mother, presumably due to the divorce and change in school and the birth of another child. He blamed Jackie for turning his life upside down. Daniel went through second child syndrome and was very unhappy with the fact that he was not the center of attention for his mother anymore. Jackie still put Daniel as her first priority, however, with another partner and the financial problems her focus had understandably shifted all of these factors seemed to feed into his rage his who was his private focus everything he did he did in his room daniel was also mechanically inclined he frequently brought damaged items into his room and attempted to fix them no matter what was wrong with him he always seemed to be able to fix computers and laptops daniel also showed a passion for the arts spending time sketching one of the common themes of his drawings was children killing other children maybe daniel was letting out pinned up anger on a piece of paper or expressing his dark intentions but even more disturbing is the fact that he was only 12 when he made these sketches he also wrote drama script that involved children killing people he went from watching violent media to creating him jackie and simon did actually stumble upon his drawings from time to time but they didn't give much thought to them considering the fact that daniel watched a lot of violent movies and played a lot of video games that involved fighting daniel would often act up and behave selfishly he stopped helping around the house and didn't do any of his chores. Simon was very concerned about Daniel's behavior. He didn't support the idea of a young mind being filled with such strange adult content. However, as he was not Daniel's biological father, he couldn't do anything to discipline him. And whenever Jackie tried to tell Daniel right from wrong, he would get violent and irrational. Many times Simon had to intervene and save Jackie from the boy. Simon recounted an incident that happened during a heated dex change. Between Jackie and Daniel, Simon had to stop Daniel from getting in Jackie's face. During the argument, Daniel went upstairs and he began kicking the banisters, swearing and yelling in revenge. He made a lot of noise, slammed the door and declared that he was angry with his mother, Chocolate sat down on. The set date he saw stood over his face, were clenched and you shouting right in, the face swearing and sort of shouting at you. Or this encounter Simon remember, Jackie being a little shaken and honestly thought she was afraid of Daniel. These were not the only red flags about. The kid Simon also recalled the time. Jackie was moving out of her house Simon wanted to help her and he went into Daniel's bedroom and like most weird cases he found something gross lurking in the room human bodily fluids Simon discovered containers full of urine hidden in the room not only that but he found some filthy towels tucked under the bed too when I say Daniel did everything in his room I really mean everything Simon was 
horrified by what he found, but that was not the worst discovery made by Simon. When looking around the room, Simon caught a glimpse of Daniel's laptop bag, and what he found in the bag was something that no parent wanted to discover. Jackie's underwear, you might think one pair of underwear is an accident, but it was full of his mother's underwear, so Simon picked up the bag and took it to Jackie saying that he had found something disturbing in Daniel's room. However, Jackie didn't see it as a red flag. She seemed completely unbothered saying that she had been looking for those four. A while Simon was shocked by Hall had to do, but he understood that Jackie wanted to avoid confronting Daniel, causing a lot of drama again all she wanted was to have a peaceful life. Daniel's disturbing behavior was not confined to his home in May 2010. Daniel was referred to the school counselor. After a violent outburst, he told his counselor that he heard voices in his head that were telling him to do things to hurt people around him. He also mentioned that Fred, the tie he wore to school, was trying to choke him. It was around this time that he became interested in soap operas. Daniel saw pleasure in two of the biggest UK television programs EastEnders and Coronation Street. He even had a YouTube channel where he made his own content based on EastEnders. If you are unfamiliar with it, EastEnders is a popular British soap opera that has been on the air since 1985. The show is set in the East End of London and follows the lives of the residents of the fictional borough of Walford. The show is known for its dramatic storyline, which often involves family conflict, romance, and crime, and like many soap operas, it sometimes includes storylines that involve violence or threats of violence. And Daniel based his content on two of the hardest, most violent characters, Phil. And then, however, that wasn't the only program he was fixated on a further research of the child's search history by the police revealed that he had searched for a specific murder scene from Coronation Street. Coronation Street is a long-running British soap opera that has been on TV since the 1960s. It sometimes includes storylines that deal with mature themes such as crime, infidelity and family conflict it has had some disturbing plots with numerous killings and other atrocities daniel was particularly obsessed with the character john stade who is repeatedly involved in major violent storylines one of his famous storylines involved him attacking another character with a hammer and leaving the wrecked body in a tram crash to cover his tracks with the Increasing concerns Daniel was taken for a mental health assessment in March 2011. The professionals at the Forney with Child and Adolescent Mental Health Services concluded that Daniel had no mental health conditions and posed no threat to others. Daniel's anger with his mother continued to grow and their relationship hung by. Fred on April 25, 2011, Jackie texted Simon and told him that Daniel would be spending the Easter weekend with his grandparents. Daniel spent the day before catching up on one of his favorite films, saw the day pass and Daniel headed down to the shed to grab the petrol and claw hammer that he had stashed there. He headed upstairs to his mother's room and calmly watched her as she slept comfortably in her bed. He then set his plan in motion and began the brutal attack smashing his mother seven times, with the hammer breaking the bones in her face and skull after the assault he continued to sprinkle newspaper bits around her wrecked body and room he doused her in petrol and lit the fire before placing a decoy weapon to throw off the investigators Daniel then ran to wake up his brother and get him out of the burning building the Barclay family neighborhood was enjoying a quiet night's sleep when suddenly word of the house fire got out the entire block of neighbors gathered on the street and dialed 9-1 and there was already a crowd surrounding the home when news reporters 
arrived before the firefighters arrived. Daniel emerged in harm from the fire with his younger brother in his arms. The family dog, and to the news Daniel, was a hero, a brave little kid that saved his sibling from a devastating fire. Daniel started to tell people that masked intruder had broken into their house, attacked his mother, and escaped. Through our window, the fire, investigators took on the task of determining the cause of the disaster. Deeper investigation revealed, however, that the fire truly started with Jackie's body, not the bed of police. Investigation began, and the police started questioning Daniel's version of the night. Simon heard the news that there had been a fire in the street where Jackie lived, and his mind jumped to only one conclusion it was Jackie's house. Daniel was behind it, although Simon had no concrete evidence to prove his theory. He had a really strong feeling that whatever had happened, the little boy had done it. He knew that something was going to go wrong, and he just counted the days till it happened. And he was right behind this devastating fire was the mind of a 14-year-old boy. Jackie had been murdered by Nada, stranger but her own blood horse weak. Little boy, music, Daniel watched a lot of soap operas, but it turned out that he didn't just enjoy these dramas, he actually took inspiration from them soap operas. Obviously do not always depict reality. They reveal dramatic incidences, situations, and people always seem to get away from their crimes unlike the real world. Maybe Daniel thought that if he could just make up a fake story and decoy murder weapon, he would get away with the crime and emerge as an inspiration. He could not have been more wrong. Forensics searched the house for evidence, and when they went to Daniel's room, they found the missing piece of this strange puzzle apparently out of the few things that survived the fire. One was Daniel's computer. It turns out that Daniel did not only watch gory shows and movies, he was somewhat of a writer himself. He had written a soap opera style script on his computer that had him as the main character and in that piece of writing. He had written the future Daniel had deleted this script. However, thanks to technology, the team of forensics was able to recover the deleted evidence. In this story, Daniel is a criminal mastermind who gets away with a string of disturbing murders. His storyline even includes cases of rape and gruesome attacks. He writes that Daniel character kills his mother with a hammer and makes it look like a break and had occurred. He then sets her on fire along with the family home, locks the door, goes to save his brother. He brings the rest of his family to safety and asks the neighbors to contact the police. Jackie dies and no one is caught for her murder. Daniel gets to move on and live his life. This was not just a creative spur. This was his plan. It seemed like Daniel had set up a perfect crime in his mind. Crime he would never be suspected of at least he could have given the character another name when the forensic team dives deeper into the computer. They found an entry in Daniel's search history, a search that would be considered a dummy mistake by anyone that wants to get away with murder. The search was how to get away with murder, literally killing 101. Do not search that. So the police now had a mounting amount of damning evidence against Daniel. Unfortunately, his soap opera fantasy didn't translate into real life. He couldn't escape his deeds like his character. It he had no choice but to admit to the murder of his mother, Daniel confessed to the police and told them about the actual events that occurred on the night of the horrifying incident. He said that day a fierce argument had broken out between the two of them since Jackie wanted to avoid confrontation and preferred to keep things bottled up. She chose to go to bed instead of resolving the argument when the clock struck one and Daniel went into his mother's room shouting about a pair of trainers that he couldn't find this insignificant argument escalated as the room filled 
with loud screams in the heat of argument Daniel picked up a hammer and struck his mother he kept on hitting Jackie with the weapon even after she fell unconscious after setting fire to the house he ran to find his brother to get him out of the house safe and sound it found the family dog and quickly grabbed him and fled the scene of the crime he had every intention of coming out as the angel in this whole incident a hero I savior the boy of the year Daniel had carefully gone over the situation in his mind over and over again he had always wanted to get revenge on his mother for ruining his perfect little life he always wanted to inflict pain on her so he finally decided he would do what he had been planning for a long time take the life out of her so that she would no longer shout at Daniel or call him out for his misbehavior. Trial of the Mysterious Murder of Jack Bartman began on the 23rd of January, 2012. Even though Daniel was saying and knew what he was doing, he pled not. Guilty, he blamed it on his mother that he was provoked to attack her as his mother verbally and physically abused him. However, other witnesses stated that Jackie was a kind-hearted woman who would never act like that with her. Children, this murder has devastated everyone. Involved there is only one person who knows why it happened and Daniel has lied consistently throughout making attempts to besmirch Jackie's character. Everyone who knew her knew she lived for her children and was a warm loving. Mother Daniel showed no remorse or sadness for the incident whatsoever it seemed like daniel had lost himself in a world of fantasy where the lines between fiction and reality got blurred during the trial he even locked eyes with simon and with his finger drew a line across his neck the motion used to threaten to kill someone it was now up to prosecutors to decide if this murder was ill-plotted revenge or a mere accident the jury did not fall for his innocent. Looking face, they found Daniel guilty. Murder, the 2nd of April 2012, brought the fall of the child, which is the worst nightmare for any parent nodding up. Crown Court found Daniel guilty of first degree murder of his mother, Jack. Bartlett, he was given a minimum life, imprisonment of 16 years. He knew it was over. Daniel is eligible for release in 2020. This can be delayed. The jury doesn't deem him fit for. Release Simon hopes that he is never released as he is a threat to society. This case has caught a lot of media attention due to the age of the murderer, along with the amount of planning that was involved in this unspeakable incident. However, to this day, no one has been able to discover the real reason why Daniel did what he did. Thanks for tuning in. That was the case of Daniel Bartland. Subscribe and hit the bell notification so you'll know when a new true crime story is uploaded. Click on one of the two videos on your screen for another one of our videos.